So let's we're going to begin this uh, hearing. Um, today is Wednesday, April third. Um, we have the District Five Environmental Commission meeting in Woodbury, Vermont, to conduct the hearing on an application five W zero eight three eight dash five, filed by Swenson Granite Company LLC to authorize the permitted quarry to expand its extraction footprint and construct a new access road. Uh, my name is John Fitzhugh. I'm chair of the district commission uh, and will preside over the hearing. Joining me on the panel tonight are the commissioner members Jeremy Reed to my right, <coughs> he's vice chair, and Joseph Wilczek to my immediate right. Uh, Josh Donabedian uh, is the district coordinator. Uh, outside of today's hearing, all communications will flow through him. So, working there. Um, preliminarily, we've identified some issues. Uh, probably all of you are somewhat familiar with the district commission. I mean, we're a, we're a, a, a citizen board, um, and we try to uh, address the issues raised by Act 250, and there's a number of different criteria. Um, we've identified, uh, I guess it's probably about seven potential issues uh, that, that we wanted to make sure we have enough information about these things, these issues. Uh, and then there may be some that you might wish to uh, comment upon yourself if you're outside of those, you'll have an opportunity to do so. Uh, and we'll get to that stage of the procedure. So the criteria that we've, <coughs> we've um, identified, criteria one, which is air pollution and noise, Criteria 1B for stormwater disposal and blasting. Um, criteria 1G for wetlands. Criteria 4 for soil erosion. Criteria 5 for transportation. Criteria 8 for aesthetics and noise. Criteria 8A for wildlife. Criteria 9D, 9E for earth resources. And criteria 9K for public investments. And I have a quick question on criteria 10. Sure, okay, then criteria 10 too, we should add that. Um, um, so to begin with, we'll, we'll ask the applicant, Sons and Granite, to give a very brief overview of just what, what you're intending to do, and then we'll pause and, and we'll see if there's any uh, people who here wish to participate, and if so, we'll identify who you are, and then we'll take a short recess to decide whether those party people who, are, who would like to participate have party, what's called party status, that's a sort of word of art, um, and then will resume and then the applicant will go a little bit more specifically on each criteria if there's issues that can be addressed. But we try to do this as informally as we can, but we try to also have a process uh, and as you can see it's being recorded. So um, so Bob, do you want to Sure. Uh, as we were explained in our in our visit today, uh, the quarry has uh, experienced quite a bit of pressure. Uh, in our latest uh, move into the quarry and uh, caused us to step back and say what needs to happen in the long term to, to make this quarry uh, a workable quarry. Um, <coughs> the pressure can only really be relieved by expanding our, our footprint without going to other methods of quarrying. Uh, over the years our biggest uh, uh, issue at the quarry, uh, which really happened 30 years ago was the noise by the quarry methods that we utilize. Uh, over the years we've really tried to, to stay up with technology and move to a better and better technology which uh, in the case of quarrying has become quieter and quieter. Uh, and so as we looked at, at what our problem was in the quarry versus what our restrictions were by our permit, uh, we realized that most of our restrictions had to do with the noise that we generated at the time we originally got our permit. Uh, so we uh, felt that it was the time was probably right for us to come back and talk to the board about uh, uh, those restrictions and ask that we uh, uh, have a modified uh, footprint uh, versus where we are currently coring. Uh, what we've tried to lay out here is, is basically we have about 70 years left in our permit Tried to, we've tried to uh, look ahead and say this is the area we feel ultimately we will end up uh, quarrying in if we're given permission. And that uh, uh, 
that's why we're, we're here. Most of what we talk about as far as the footprint uh, will be a gradual process. Uh, as any of you have been in, uh, involved in quarrying, nothing goes very fast, uh, especially when you're quarrying granite. So uh, if you look at our current uh, quarry, uh, it's been there for well over 100 years. Uh, we've quarried uh, quite actively over the last 30 years. And uh, you know it is still a limited uh, uh, area that, that we disturb. Um, while we were doing that, the way the quarry has expanded over the years is every time that we we step back and go down a level, the <coughs> slope of the quarry uh, enlarges the quarry floor. And uh, this last time when we stepped down, uh, we realized that. Uh, we are at a level where it was almost easier to go down and exit the quarry than it would be to get back up and then take a mile plus road to get out of the quarry. Uh, so as we looked at this whole project, we said long term, it makes sense for us to develop a second access road. Right now, if we have any problems with our, our mile long road, which we have had in the past where accidents do happen, uh, we have no way to get in and out of the quarry with, with emergency vehicles. Uh, having a second entrance would really make it uh, a lot safer for all, all uh, involved, especially those of you who took the ride up and down the quarry. It is quite a road. Uh, you can imagine driving a tractor trailer with a 30-ton block on the back of it. Um, it, it. It takes a level of skill and, and pretty much we restrict who can haul for us because we don't want an experience. Uh, people showing up at our quarry. Uh, so, in a nutshell, that's really where, why we're here. We feel that the restrictions that were put on us as far as as uh, area of quarry were originally sound-based, and we think we've addressed that problem. In our last round, we agreed to a much lower uh, sound limit uh, due to our quarry methods. Uh, and we tested at all our, our uh, neighboring uh, borders and uh, we were well within the, the prescribed uh, levels so we, we felt good about that and, and that in a nutshell is why we're here. Okay, thank you. Um, now in terms of, um, hold on a second, this is, I'm following some notes here in terms of what, uh, what we want to do is see if there are any people here who would like to uh, uh, apply for party status. Uh, requests or party status and that would allow you to be able to comment upon the uh, best in the application, ask questions, uh, make some comments you might want to make, and, and you have, as a party, you have certain appeal rights too as well. But what we'll do is we'll see. If you raise your hand if you would like to feel uh, just you know, maintain party status. And then that we'll ask you to identify yourself and what your relationship is, whether you're a neighbor or you're a, 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 um, automatically a party because of your, a, 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 for example, a municipality. Um, and we will see if they can have as any objection to your being considered, and then we will probably take a recess and sort of discuss it a little bit if there's any discussion needed to be done. So yeah, and um, so what I, we would ask is that you state your name, like like uh, the chair said. Um, and your relationship to the project and your concern. Um, we need to figure out, as I imagine most of you aren't specifically familiar with the 10 criteria, so you may not know what your concerns fall under. Um, but state your concern and then we'll figure out what criterion that comes under so we can um, grant you party status for the, for the concern you, you've come to your decision. And, and why that's important is that sometimes it, your party status depends on what criteria you are interested in. Right. Yep. And so if you'd like and and if you'd like to have <laughs> testimony on the record today, you'll you will need to be um, request party status. If you're here just to observe then um, you by no means need to participate in that. Right. So uh, who would like to have see party status? Just raise your hand. Do any of our people no. have no. that we have so. Okay. Um, so let's, yeah. <coughs> start in the front, we'll go zigzag. So just identify yourself and, and uh, what's your name? Rita Richardson, and I'm a property owner on Cabot Road. And I guess my concerns would be relative to the noise 
and traffic. Okay. Carol Ray, neighbor um, adjoining uh, your piece of property. Uh, noise is a concern and I just uh, want to have a, a foot in the door so I can complain if I want to. I don't know <laughs> what I want to say yet. Are you also on Cabot Road? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Jen Mojo with the Agency of Natural Resources and we're a statutory party. Okay. And Jen submitted um, comments prior to the hearing, so she, she will be admitted to status under, under those, um, which include, on behalf of all of ANR, so mm -hmm. it includes air pollution, stormwater, blasting, wetlands, wildlife, and earth extraction. Yeah. Um, Anybody else in the row? Yes, uh, I guess so. Uh, Michael Gray, I'm a select board me member on the town of Woodbury. Um, and one concern I have is a pending project for paving the Cabot Road. Um, the select board had recently started um, discussing paving up to the present entry um, to the quarry. And once we were aware of the pending Act 250, um, we are you know planning thinking about um, paving up to the, the new access road and I just would like to have um, an opportunity to negotiate with Slex and Quarry for perhaps an increase in the um, extraction the, the reimbursement that they give the town um, which is at this present um, six and a half cents per cubic foot of usable granite um, our, you know, there will be some cost increase in, in maintaining that road. Um, so I, I would like to make sure that they're open to negotiating an increase in that. You have an opportunity to talk to us. And also, I did, I did find um, a map at home that we tend to use. It's the one I rely on the most for the, the status of the road um, that goes into the old quarries. Um, and I, if you would like to have that as something to look at, I have a uh, so, Mike, you're here in your role as Excellent. the town. So, the, yes. the the requesting party is the town of the town of the very select board. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Kylie Briggs, it's, uh, K I L E Y. Uh, I'm one of the neighbors and own the property immediately across from where the uh, uh, new access road would be uh, uh, put in. And my main concern is in regards to uh, having a, a gate installed as close to Cabot Road as possible, um, just to prevent people from um, using the new access as an after hours party location. Okay. Yes, sir. Roy Eastman. Pardon, I'm sorry. Roy Eastman. Roy Eastman. Roy Eastman. Roy Eastman. Roy Eastman. Yes. You're a neighbor as well, Mr. Eastman? I'm, I'm right below, I guess. Are you, is your driveway off of Cabot Road? Yes. Okay. My concerns would be noise, traffic, environmental. Can you be more specific on the environmental, please? I just, uh, concerns with, you know, heavy equipment, you know, hydrocarbons, okay. antifreeze, you know, transmission leaks, anything, you know, how do they address it, what do we do? And actually, environmentally too is I mean, does the, the scrap just granite just stays there in piles? It's just there forever. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Randy Smith. I also live on Cabot Road. So my concern: um, noise, traffic with opening in the area. With the opening? Expanding the noise. Oh, yeah. And where on Cabot Road do you live? Do you live downhill or uphill from the uh, current entrance? Uh, we have property on both. We have, um, at the beginning of Cabot Road, mm -hmm. we is our house, and we just purchased a couple years ago 64 acres that's um, diagonally from 
where the new entrance is going to be, or possibly be. Is that vacant land right now? We have a fifth wheel up there. But no one lives there right now? No. Yeah, we yeah. stay up there during the summer. It's on the opposite side of the road. It is. Robin Jerky. Okay. Landowner on the Cabot Road. It might be what, a quarter of a mile from that entrance. I believe some of you might have turned around in our parking lot well, up there we, today. We appreciated that very much. <laughs> <laughs> Where it says no parking. <laughs> we were going to, I think the previous driveway was. It was your kind of yeah. but we thought it was a little narrow. It's a little wet. Too. Yeah, <laughs> okay. so yeah little ours wet. is on the same side as the but quarry. It was, yeah. it, we yeah. didn't want to have to drive all the way to Cabot. Right. Come back, so. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> My concern is right now, like if there is a truck up in the quarry and another truck is coming in, they basically stop at the foot of the hill where the pavement stops right through that section. So if they're going up further, are they still stopping down there? And who are they going to radio to to find out if there's another truck coming out? Okay, so traffic concerns, um, both on the access road as well as on, on Cabot Road? Or yes. Yeah. So are the traffic concerns re with respect to in front of your house or no. Cabot Road generally? It would be down closer to the village end of it. Um, there, there, there is an ordinance on this road that a, a truck can't travel between school hours, 7.15 to 8.50, and they do park on the Cabot Road and wait till the kids are in school and then they continue. So that could be an issue or not. Maybe you're just trying to identify who's going to participate here. Oh, oh sure. Okay. Anybody else? I have a question. It's very unclear to me, I don't know about everybody else in this room, but how does this, what is the purpose of this hearing and how does it work? Okay. Well, the, the state has a law called Act 250, which was written some 50 years ago, and it asks that, that we, uh, this, this commission, if, the, if, a, if an application is triggered, triggers Act 250, and in this case they have an, act, an existing Act 250 permit, so they're amending that permit, so we have to come back for us to consider that amendment. So we take a look at all of these factors, and there's like 30 factors total in the statute to try to see whether there's meets the burden of proof and required to, you know, what, what's going on with those respect to these environmental factors. And then we issue a decision, and, and if, there's a, if we believe that there's a permit is warranted, we issue a permit that has conditions on it saying, okay, you can do this work that you have outlined, but there's certain conditions that have to be met and accomplished and attained. And if that, if the applicant is satisfied with that, uh, and if the parties are satisfied with that, then that's where it, that's where it stays, and that becomes official, and that becomes entered in the in the um, town records, and, and that governs what happens on that piece of land for the period of time the permit's in effect. If there's disagreement about it, and someone wants to appeal, you can appeal that to some um, to the environmental court, I guess, right? Um, or yes, it, yeah, to the environmental court. Uh, and then there's another process. We are, we're out of it at that point. So this is, the, this is our task is to try to preliminary look at this and to assess what's, whether these criteria are being satisfied. Is that? Is that? It's sort of, yeah. So we have a say, but we don't have a say. Well, you have a say because you're here and you have an opportunity to participate. Um, and we, make the, we are charged with an obligation to try to determine what's the right thing to do. So, okay. Understood. Um, I would compare it to a witness in, in, a, in a court case. You, you can provide testimony and, and the judges use it accordingly. Assuming you're granted party status on particular criteria. Right. So is there, do you want to have a, now a recess this for a minute and we'll talk about the party status? Sure. Okay. Is there a um, place we can, can go? Can we go the library? Right in the library. Yeah. Um, so that will just be a couple minutes and we'll be right back. <laughs> so thank you very much. Sorry for the uh, delay here. A uh, number of uh, issues we had to talk about or address. Um, in terms of party status, now the applicant obviously has party status. Uh, ANR has party status. 
and the town of Woodbury uh, has party status. So that, those are all declined. Um, a number of you have spoken to the issue of noise and the concern about noise. And um, we want to address that because we think we, this will be, we want to make sure you understand what the situation is with respect to noise. Um, there is a, um, what, do you want to do this or shall I? I'll do it. There's, a, there's an existing permit and the permit has a limitation in terms of what the noise can be at the property line. And I think it's 55. I believe it's 55. 55 decibels. Anyway, it's an established permit and, and from what we've heard based on the testimony and, and documentation that was submitted as far as this permit is that there's not any any concern that people have had that the noise has been greater than that. And if there were indication that the noise is greater than that, um, there's an it would be an appropriate for some kind of an enforcement action, which we don't do. We don't handle the enforcement action, but someone would take come to ANR and say this permit it, this applicant is in violation of that permit. Um, so where we're left is we're since that's an existing part of the permit, and there's no evidence that this activity is going to, the, the, what they're seeking to do now is going to increase that or violate that permit condition, that we don't really have any reason to address the issue of noise. Um, so, so people who are seeking party status strictly on the question of noise, it's irrelevant. So we don't really need to give you party status on that issue alone. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, and just, just to be clear, this application is not requesting a change to the sound standard. Mm -hmm. So no matter what they may get approval for here, they still have to abide by that sound standard. And that's why noise is not an issue here, because it's not changing. And, and I can um, offer you the, that permit condition that, that we reference uh, specifically. Um, so... Quick background, this project was originally permitted in 1988, I believe, 86. And then where we are now, this is, would be the fifth amendment to this, or the original permit. In the fourth amendment, as um, technology evolved, the sound, the decibel level, which originally was 98, um, was lowered to 55 decibels. And that the con condition 15, of the fourth amendment to the permit states that the quarry shall be operated so as not to result in a noise level greater than 55 decibels as measured anywhere beyond the property line. Um, so to summarize, what they are proposing in this application does not propose to change that uh, noise level and their activities do not appear to us uh, based on what uh, evidence we have that will ex exceed those. If at any point you have proof that that is happening. Um, you can either bring it to our attention or to the attention of, of um, uh, the, the permittees, and you know we'll find find the best way to go about addressing that as a as a permit violation. As of right now, as as what they're proposing to do does not impact that permit condition. Um, we are not legally obligated to address that. We're we're, we're not allowed to. Can I just add a clarification to? And I'm speaking for those people, a number of people that. Um, mention the noise issue. I think the main issue with noise is not so much from the quarry, but from the trucks coming down the hill into the village right. okay. with the jig brakes. I so we'll, don't know if that's true we'll or not. That's true. But Absolutely. that's my, that's my traffic. understanding. Traffic. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, again, is not part of the permit. So, so, yeah, so, now, so now the issue is um, to have a party status, it's not just enough that you'd be um, close by or a neighbor. You have to have an interest with the, what you're articulating that is more specific than that. So, Jocelyn has some language that the courts have used or uh, in the past to sort of define that. We'll just oh, we'll sure. short, we're shortening it. To yeah, we're, we're like sentences. three sentences. We just wanted to share it with everyone so you understood the rules that we have to apply. Um, so, a person asserting party status has to allege an interest protected by Act 250 that is particular to them rather than a general policy concern shared with the public. Um, an interest can st can st may still be particularized, however, even if it's shared with members of the public so long as it's specific to you, specific to the party, and not merely an interest in the common rights of all people. So that's the first test, a particularized interest to you specifically. And then the second part of the test is the, the person requesting party status needs to show a reasonable possibility 
that the commission, that our action may affect your particularized interest. You, the individual, needs to demonstrate more than a casual, a causal, a casual connection. Unsupported assertions with vaguely defined interests do not suffice, and an offer of proof must be specific and concrete. So those are the standards that we have to apply when we're determining who is a party. Um, and so there you go. And now what we'll do is we'll go through um, each individual um, and give our, your um, indications as to whether you're a party status and for what criteria. And it's, this is a preliminary party status. So when, we, when, you have an answer, when you have an opportunity to speak, we might ask some more specific questions like, well, you're a neighbor, but exactly where are you if we don't already know? We know where some of you are. Are you directly across the property or are you, are you adjoined? Are you on a butter? Uh, or are you just a neighbor in the sense that you live, you know, close by? So sometimes, I think we understand that for most of you, but some of you, we may not. And if in the course of doing that, we find out that you're not that close or close enough to have that particularized interest, we might find that, that, that when we reach our decision that you aren't given party status. So that's why we do it preliminarily. We're trying to do it sort of exp as expeditiously as we can. So if we, if we do all of that, and I've got this list <coughs> correct, um, Mr. Richardson, Peter Richardson, uh, we will give you party status on transportation issues. Rita. 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 I'm sorry, Rita. Rita. <laughs> Rita. On traffic issues, uh, transportation issues, but on noise because we don't need to really address noise. Um, Carol Ray, this, uh, because you're only concerned you raised before. Well, was now noise. you have cleared up some of the criteria. Right. My head's been spinning. Yeah. I have a wetland that's at the base of this mountain. Everything comes down, runs through it to the village. Maybe I want to go there. <laughs> how about that? But can you explain specifically how the changes to this project would affect your wetland? Well, I, I'm not sure. Expansion, you know, where's all this stuff going to run to? It might run right into my wetland and contaminate water flow into the village. I have a, there's a series, Buck Lake drains right through my property. They're doing their expansion on the other side of right, the quarry. It runs the other way, yeah. Um, where, where specifically are you on? 327 Cabot Road. Where is that relative to the two access, the proposed and the existing? Uh, I'm like three driveways down from the Fletcher Quarry access. Okay. And, and you're right, maybe everything will drain over the other side, but if you're going to take cut off that level and, and make it flat, then there's a potential for things to shift and flow different ways. Don't you think? No? Probably not going to flow back up over the mountain. You don't think? No. <laughs> you do that? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll hold that thought to yeah, hold that we'll, thought. because we might have to be concerned. And I, that, so. I just have uh, one other question, if I can just throw it in. That communication tower that's up there, will that be replaced, removed, lowered? What will happen I to that? find out about that. I think that's part of the testimony. I think oh. we heard it earlier that it's going to be removed. Removed. But, but it's not really no. part of the permit. It's, right. The, we have no jurisdiction over communication tokens. Okay. All right. Mm. Um, yeah. That's some, that's some other regulatory body. Uh, in our, we've already talked about that, and Woodbury, we've talked about, but we, we want to, Mr. Gray, we want to make it, Mr. Gray, we want to make it clear that in terms of the criteria that you're interested in, which is transportation, we don't have any jurisdiction to talk about um, okay. some kind of negotiation between yourself and the applicant. If you have concerns about transportation or traffic or consequences on the implications for this on the road, you're welcome to talk about that in terms of what that is, but we don't, you know, that's, we, we're, we're just an environmental thing, we're not. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, you know, the the road, the new access road is a class four road, but I, I you know, read the ANR report and it does seem like they're going to be addressing any type of erosion issues yeah. that might come up on, so well, that's not really a concern of mine. Okay. Well, it seems well, like it's already, it's already been addressed. It is a concern of mine, but it seems like it's already being addressed. Okay. Kylie Briggs, uh, party status, uh, again, on the transportation traffic issues. Uh, that's the concern you had, particularly relating to the gate, right? Right. Um, uh, Mr. Eastman, um, the noise, we, we, we noise, we've already addressed that. Traffic, you're, you live um, down the road, right? You're, you're downhill? My property is between the Cabot Road and the 
uh, high road that they're using to get into the quarry now. Right. And you were concerned about traffic, noise, and, and aesthetics. You can't you can't see the environmental. You can't see the no. no, no quarry. A lot of times you can't see environmental because that's why it becomes a nightmare later. <laughs> no, the gravel pile. You can't see the gravel pile. No. Right. Home. So, so I think it's it would be traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll give you party status on traffic issues. Um. Um. Just. I can't even read my own. Brandy, Brandy Smith. Brandy Smith. Uh, on traffic. Yep. Party mm -hmm. status for traffic. Mm -hmm. And Robin Durkee. Um, we think that um, because of your location, you're, you're mm -hmm. the, most of the truck, in fact, that we heard today at least, and we can confirm that with the applicant, that almost all the trucks go the other direction. They all go down towards. Yeah, the but river. if they're coming up the hill and they miss that turn. My property is the first one on the left-hand side that has the parking lot where people turn around <laughs> to go back. And there's the the applicant's thinking maybe he shouldn't have turned around and got parked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to picture a tractor trailer trying to turn yeah. around. Yeah. 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 I mean, has that, has that happened? Is, no. is this a, an issue where a tractor trailer is trying to... There's been... At the present time, not often. No, but with if the new access and the vehicles that come from Canada come in and they don't know where they're going, there's many times they've had to turn around in situations so that... So we'll give you party status on traffic yeah. issues for that. Um, so I think the only one we have to... Do we have to go back there and talk a little bit about uh, Carol's situation with respect to the wetland? Or... Do you party status? No. No? No. 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 No, 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 I don't think we need to talk about it. No, we don't. <coughs> yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. 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 Okay, it just needs to see the map that shows that the expansion is going to be. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. One of them went on the back. Let's use our GPS. Okay. Right. All right. So. So with respect to uh, Carol Ray, um, we've determined that that uh, we're not going to give you party status on wetlands because of the reasons that, that Jocelyn talked about in terms of particularized interest. We think it's just too speculative. To, but we, you, we do have a category called Friend of the Commission, which would allow you to, to speak if you have that issue. Uh, so I think we've addressed all of the um, party status issues in a general way, and, and we'll come back now to the applicant a little more specifically about what they're intending to do. But um, one thing you should think about in terms of or the people who want to speak on traffic should think about is that there is, there is no change in the amount of uh, rate in which um, um, uh, the applicant is permitted to extract stone out of the quarry. So that remains the same. So presumably <coughs> there's not going to be any increase in truck traffic. I, I, we can hear a little bit more specifically about that. But where the difference is that the, where the truck traffic will occur is it, it's instead of coming out the road it occurs now, a good deal of it, from what we I heard, will come out of the, another road that's higher up the hill. So this, the distance, this, particularly if you are in, the, in between those two roads, the existing road and where the new road might be, uh, then you have a then you have a more specific interest in terms of traffic and concern. So that's, that's you should think about that in terms of your testimony in terms of that. Okay. Well, let's start. Let's start. Come here. back to the, come back to the applicant. So uh, we need to swear we have people no in. Objection to everybody having party staff. Yes. No. Okay. Um, so we need to swear th those people who are interested in testifying here. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence that you are about to give on the matter under consideration is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Um, under penalties of perjury, I think you need to say as well. So those of you who are planning to testify, why don't you raise your hand again if you're given party status and you're going to testify. Oh, or if you're friends of, friends of the commission. Yeah, anybody would like to testify and have evidence on the record? So um, everybody just say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Anybody say no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, so now let's get back to the applicant. So do you want to give a little bit more specifics in terms of what you're intending to do? And you don't have to speak well, for well, you. Well, just in terms um, of streamlining. Oh, you should do the, the issue. Yeah, run right. through the criteria. I'm sorry, yes, we should do it. It's 8 o'clock, so I just want to make yes, sure. No, that's a good point. We should do it by criteria. So um, 
Okay, 1B. Right, Josh, we start with 1B today? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if I skipped over air pollution. Did I? 1A? Yeah, 1A. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So 1A is, the, the criteria is, will not result in undue water or air pollution. Um, mm. uh, is there anything that the applicant would like to say on that criteria? Uh, we're, we're not changing any, anything that we're doing as far as uh, our techniques or approach. Uh, we most of, uh, we had comments from A&R about the air pollution uh, and uh, most all of those are already in our permit, so we really have no objection to their comments. So. Okay. Um, does A R you want to add anything? To that? No, uh, we had asked for these conditions in the 2016 um, during the 2016 proceedings, and there are um, there are the conditions that we're asking for are our standard dust control and suppression conditions, which address dust during operations, and then dust also um, from trucking. Okay. So 1B, um, let's see if I've got the right category. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to summarize what the criteria is, stormwater. Um, I can do that. Right? I, I had a, it's easier for the application. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's waste disposal, right? So, 1B is waste, disposal, waste, waste disposal, and the applicant is asked to demonstrate that the project will meet any applicable health or environmental conservation department regulations regarding the disposal of waste and demonstrate that the project will not involve the injection of waste or toxic substances into ground waters. Um, and specifically, ANR um, ahead of time raised concerns about stormwater and uh, blasting under Criterion 1B. So first from the applicant's point of view, is there any change in, that, in what you're operating, you're doing, and, and uh, anything you want to add on this criterion? Um, not at all. Uh, the, so you haven't already submitted? Yeah. No, I mean, we got A&R's uh, uh, criteria, or their comments, uh, our stormwater permit, we are we realize anything we do, if we put in the road, we have to amend our permit to stay current, and uh, you know we fully intend to do that. Uh, as far as blasting, uh, we already have those stipulations in our permit. We agreed to those last time, so uh, that's not a problem for us. Okay. I had a question on page eight of your application. There's a question that says, what is the acreage of the project site which will be permanently covered with buildings, roadways, parking areas, or other impervious areas as part of the project and you put not applicable? Is your new access road considered impervious? And if it is, I'm wondering why that wasn't included, why this was answered not applicable. Well, I think for the most part we're considered a granite but, you know, precipice that has no drainage or it's just raw granite. Uh, Right, but the application is, and maybe this is a follow-up that we'll ask for, and I'm just trying to understand, the, the access road will be impervious, is that right? Uh, the new access road, the 1,200-foot section? It'll be gravel. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's an impervious surface, so that's going to be new impervious surface. Okay. So, I stand correct. Are there any other parts of the, I think that's the only part of the project that right. is Pervious now that will be changed to impervious. Is that right? So that would Everything else is within the quarry well, area that's rock. That would be yeah. one acre. Well, and, and I guess maybe and I may, may want to weigh out on this, but I mean, theoretically, by extension, you do have some pervious soil with the overburden on the koi footprint that is now going to be basically a bare granite footprint. And so, um, so looking at Jen now, it seems like that's now going to be impervious. So your total impervious area, albeit not buildings, not man-made, your total imper impervious area is going to be significantly more. That may be covered under the existing multi-sector general permit. Okay. That's a good question. So for example, now we're on the, their site plan, where they have a section that's forested, right. ultimately they're asking for a permit that that forest would be gone. And, and so has 
Is that covered under the multi-sector general permit? If it's permit? part of the, in, or attributable to the, the industrial activity, which would be the quarrying operation, then it would okay. likely be covered under okay. the multi-sector. But that, if that's considered all impervious, that, that should have been identified in the permit as new and impervious in, in this, in that question. So maybe we might have a follow-up, like at the end of the day, what, how is this going to change? Do you, do you have the acreage for that now so we don't have to do a follow-up or? I wrote it. No, so no for it, it, in total, so you're, When yeah, you expand 19, out to the green line, I can tell you and if that's impervious. 20, 20 acres. Mm -hmm. And what's the existing? Do you know that? It's probably similar. What's that? Probably similar, well. You know, our grout piles are, are about as pervious as right. you, you possibly <laughs> everything goes through right. those, you know. But, so it's, but that'll be considered impervious. Yeah. yeah. The grout pile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. because probably the, I guess yeah, the question is how much of, if you were to and, I, and a, a question a follow up question I have is how rapidly we would do we would do this, but if you were to extend the quarry out to the limits that you show on that plan, how many additional acres of forest oh. land is 20 additional acres of forest land. That, that's what uh, is additional, not total. It would be, yeah, the, I believe it was 19. The agency, agency uh, estimated 19.8 acres. Okay. 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 Now, in terms of. Um, Excuse me, do you need the road calculated? That's about an acre. Yeah, I mean, I can yeah. I mean, we will, I think, at some point in time. Okay. If you can do it here, it's one right. last question right. we, we have to deal with later. So, in terms of the uh, pace in which you would be doing this clearing of the top of the overburden, as, as Jeremy refers to it as, do you have any idea at how quickly you would do that? Uh, when we dis we discussed it with um, uh, Noel, when we, we were talking about the northern long-eared bats yeah. and uh, uh, we our initial intent is about a two acre uh, in that corner mm -hmm. that represents about two acres of, of tree line which we'd like to accomplish this year um, you know the the pace of quarrying uh, in the next decade Maybe you would get to half of it, Randy? I don't know. It takes a long time. Yeah, so, so, so I guess where we're really all going into here is you're not going to clear that place or clear that area, strip the overbird, and then quarry it as you get to it. You're just going to clear no. yeah, as you quarry. Yeah. Okay. So you might do, you conceivably might do half of that 20 acres over a period of 10 years. And when we did talk to, to Noel, you know, and we, we agreed that he would work with us to, to figure out, you know, what would be okay. He thought the road would be fine, and he thought that corner. So. Who's Noel? Oh, he's the uh, A&R. He's, he's A&R. He's, he's, he's the wildlife oh, biologist. Okay. Okay. All right. He's one of them. Hey, yeah, Noel. I didn't know him either. Right. <laughs> nice um, enough guy. Noel, see everybody's out here. <laughs> he, he's the one that brought it uh, to our attention, the northern okay. long-eared yeah. bats. Endangered bats. Yeah. So we didn't know much about that. So. Okay. But, hey, 28. 28 acres for the road. For the road. From, from, okay. from the, what would be considered the Cabot Road um, curb cut yep. to the base of the quarry. And, the and technically that's that's conservative because there actually is a road for mm -hmm. the first section. Yeah, it's yeah, not, that's not, counting, not packed gravel now though. Right? That's counting everything from, uh, that's, from that's Cabot Road. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. okay, great. Outlined in blue. Yep, and excellent. If you could say that into whatever form you're able, and, and we'll ask just so we have that. Send it to you? Yeah, and then we'll, we'll ask it formally through the hearing recess order. Okay. Um, but okay. thank you. Anything else on uh, criteria 1B? So 1G is wetlands. Uh, a permit will be granted when it is demonstrated by the applicant. That the development of the sub of the development will not violate the rules of the sector of natural resources relating to significant wetlands. So um, there is a wetland, I guess, on the property. Uh, the question um, is its relationship yeah. to the road. The uh, you know, we we have previous testimony that there are official wetlands, and uh, we spoke with uh, Shannon at, at the wetland, and she identified this red outlined area 
in her comments, uh, which we agree is a, a probably a created by us wet, wetland over the, the period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and we have no intention of going in that area. Uh, it would be, you know, for granite trucks, it would take, uh, you know, we'd have to create a whole road base. We're going to stay up on the, on the granite surface or the, the very close to the surface granite uh, hillside that we that we mentioned. And so we've agreed with her that she will come to a site visit and will lay out the road to her liking to stay away from what she identified. You know, she said she needs to get in to see whether it's a two or a three or a, you know, what, what type of setback there was. And we said we really have no problem with that. Jen, did ANR have any concern about vernal pools here or is it, is it more of a wetland? Okay. Yeah, the, the drainage that Shannon had identified. What might be helpful is if the, when you have the visit from, from ANR is that you give us something a little bit more specific in terms of the location of the wetland versus the, the, the um, uh, roadway. Uh, we have, a, we have the, the, this, the aerial map that you've shown, but we don't really have any meets and bounds in terms of the, you know, the distances that exist, so that would, would show the distance from the, the road to the, this wetland. Um, that might be helpful. Um, any other comments that you know, I wish to make? Okay. I, I just had a question on the process on the wetlands, what, what you were thinking of um, in terms of, you know, timing and communication back here. So would, would a permit condition that states the road will be constructed outside of wetland and its buffers be appropriate for you rather that than us waiting yes. for this? We would be, we'd oh, okay. be happy to abide by that. And that's what I told her. I said, listen, we okay. feel we have enough area that we can avoid any conflict. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't want to go down there anyway. Okay. The problem being there's six feet of snow right, right. That's in, that, in the area she needs to get to. And, and you know, so we would okay. appreciate that type of restriction where, where okay. we know nothing will happen for a time period anyways. But, right. but we would be happy to satisfy her concerns. Okay, moving on to criteria four, soil erosion. Uh, the criteria says um, the project will not cause unreasonable soil erosion or reduction in the capacity of land to hold water so that a dangerous or unhealthy condition may result. Um, and I guess, I think that also was probably addressed in the memo from the ANR, but then you want to add? Uh, uh, you know, from our perspective, we have no water source. So, Anything we do in the quarry is done in a fashion to try to capture the water that we, so we create a bowl, we try to channel it into where we have our uh, water storage. So, you know, we're not going to haphazardly just create a situation where our water goes down the hill because we would like to have that water. Are there any, um, in this new road that you're constructing, are there any culverts you're going to have to put in? Or, um... There will probably be one with the drainage out of that wetland area. There, there's so, a current granite culvert there, mm -hmm. and so we'll probably have to extend that to make a two-lane road. So if you if you file something, and I think we probably would request that, something more specific in terms of the road, just show us where the culvert would yeah. be. Um, ANR, any, any additional? I, uh, I believe the construction activities are also included within that multi-sector general permit, so now they're the newer MSGPs are a combination construction permit and a multi-sector. So the the disturbances associated with the clearing are covered under that permit. For the benefit of, of those of you who don't understand that, there's a whole pr permit process through ANR for construction that's independent of anything we do. Um, and, there's, and there's criteria on that to, to be addressed as well. And, and um, just wanted to put some observations on the record from the site visit that the new portion of road um, will be less than 15% grade. Is that correct? Um, the, the portion that's through the woods. Oh, yeah. Oh, the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, criteria five transportation. So the criteria says uh, will not result in un will not cause unreasonable congestion or unsafe conditions with respect to the use of the highways, waterways, railroads, airports, and airways, and other means of transportation existing or proposed. Um, so 
Uh, do you want anything to preliminary that you'd like to say? On I mean, I think, uh, you know, as you pointed out, that we're not asking for an increase in our truck traffic uh, that, that this project will generate. And in fact, we think that, that some of the congestion will go away and that the new road will have the ability to have trucks go both past each other. So that there, it won't be like the hillside road that we are currently on, where there's just no way to make a wider road on that hillside. Um, so we, we, you know, and the other thing will be you know, the congestion will be less in that they have two options. They can, some trucks will be going up to the upper quarry level where they're quarrying on the left-hand side, and some will be servicing the main quarry, uh, and they'll come through the lower road. But uh, we don't really see. Um, a, a change in traffic, uh, I guess technically, or, or maybe not te technically, the trucks are not mandated where they go on the Cabot Road. Once they, once they leave our property, they can, they can take a left and go to Cabot if they want, they can take a right to go to, to Woodbury. Um, in, in reality, there'll probably be more traffic between our second road and, and the Swenson uh, Quarry Road currently, uh, but we don't think it's an unreasonable amount for the, the quality of road that's there. At the site visit today, you had mentioned a gate. Can you can you discuss your plans for that, if any? A gate. A gate. No. Yeah. Um, we were we, well. You guys were out. We were we were discussing with Woodbury. Uh, you know what is what is the protocol on the Class Four road that they've identified that for. Um, we would like the road as close, uh, or the gate as close to the road. Uh, I believe Kylie wants that. You mean as close to Cabot Road? Right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have no problem with that. Uh, we will put the gate as, as close as we're permitted to. Uh, mm -hmm. For the road setback for yeah. plowing and yeah. And, whatnot. and they were they were we, they were all kicking around what has to happen at the town level. We, we got to do a little bit more research on on how they want to handle it, but we'd probably work with the, the town on what would be the appropriate gate on that. The Fletcher Quarry slash uh, Swinton, I guess they renamed it to the Swinson Quarry Road, uh, we don't have a gate on uh, until you get to our access up to the quarry. And so if there was a condition that said something like the, the applicant shall construct a gate as close to Cabot Road as permitted under local local Jurisdiction. Right. Jurisdiction, would that be comfortable? MSHA yeah. wants us to have, uh, Mine Safety and Health wants us to have a gated access, so we're all okay with that. Um, maybe this is in the in the uh, application, but what is the width of the new road that you're concerned? 40 feet. 40 feet. <coughs> okay. Um, yes, yes. Um, so we know a number of you have. Um, had expressed concerns regarding traffic, transportation, so I'll go in order that the people who had identified themselves. So I guess Mrs. Richardson, Rita Richardson. Well, I think he may have answered my question, but he said that there's not going to be an increase in the mining. So one would presume that with that, there's not going to be an increase in the number of trucks going up and down Cabot Road, because right now, in my opinion, it's too many, um, and the frequency of that. So I'm just curious, um, to, just to understand that the whole purpose of this is so that you can access your the, the quarry and you can mine it differently. Mm -hmm. By what is the yeah. purpose then if we're not if you're not expanding actually the right right now? I mean the road you're talking about the right. I'm access. talking about why you're doing this yeah, anyway. Like, yeah. Our, we've reached a level in the quarry where it's actually much easier to drive down than it is to drive three layers back up on a very steep road and then take a mile plus road that hugs the, uh, it's a single lane road that hugs the side of the mountain all the way down and it's somewhat dangerous. We've had trucks uh, jackknife on it and roll over uh, and when something like that happens we have no other way to get into the quarry. So we're adding, by adding a second road we have an emergency access so EMTs could get in if there really was a problem at the quarry while something was happening there. Uh, it just greatly, it's a, just a much safer situation than, than we had just from distance and the terrain. Uh, and just so um, everyone understands, their existing permit limits them to an extraction rate. 
And if they want to go beyond that, they need to request a permit amendment. And so the permit extraction rate is tied to how many truck trips they have informed the commission they make. I don't remember the exact number, seven. seven, seven, nine, seven but if, if, if anyone notices that all of a sudden there's 20, 30 truck trips a day, that's something that should be that's brought to seven, the attention. That's seven trips per truck? No, no. Uh, seven total a day. Right. So that's not, they're not asking to change that. Yeah. And so <laughs> if you. I'm confused because on page 12 of 23F. Oh, wait, wait, hold, hold oh, yeah. on. Yes, hold on. We, we should make sure yeah. we're done yeah. with, with, with Ms. Be, Richardson first. Right. Mm -hmm. And let you right. go in order. And I just to, you know, kind of reiterate and, and, and continue to clarify. So they are currently authorized to their authorized maximum, maximum annual extraction rate is 750,000 cubic feet per year. They're not proposing to increase that. So therefore, there won't be any additional material annually. They're just opening up the area where they can get pull the material out of. So there won't be any new truck trips associated with what they're proposing to do. If at any point in the future they want to increase their extraction rate from 750,000 to 800,000, this whole process unfolds again. And you, you have the opportunity to come back and you speak to your concerns about truck traffic. I have another point of clarification with that. I don't believe that they've reached the maximum from the previous permit of their extraction rates. So there might be an, as they approach that upper level, there might be an increase in traffic on the road, but because I don't think they're there yet. Right. So that was going to be my next question. How close are they to that maximum extraction? Um, do, you know? do you have a rough estimate of you know, your annual? I do. I'm not sure I want it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. You actually don't need to answer a question from another party. So, I mean, unless you require it, um, that could be proprietary information. We have a long ways to go to get to our, <laughs> to our maximum. But in addition to that, there's a limitation in terms of the number of trucks they can have per day, right? The average is 35 a week. Um, so other, I can tell you, let's see, the truck traffic is, is prohibited from 7.15 to 8 a.m. and between 2.45 and 3.30 p.m., so no trucks allowed during those hours. Um, yeah, just, just for the sake of expedience, you know, I think what we need to focus on is that none of that's changing, right? So that, that's not something we can consider uh, tonight. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the net um, difference in their permit conditions as it relates to extraction or their volume of trucks is, is, is not uh, being changed with this permit amendment. Um, okay, so then we move to um, um, Ky Kylie Briggs, do you have anything you want to add to the... Uh, so, um, in regards to the gate, I'm satisfied with, with what's been discussed so far. Um, I did remember one other concern, and that is um, if tr trucks are exiting the proposed uh, access, um, that would mean that they also uh, will be driving over the top of the hill, basically at the top of Cabot Road. Um, and that's a site where um, as you go over the top of the hill, you also round a corner, and I can see that there could potentially be uh, conflict with vehicles coming the other way, not realizing there's a, a large truck you know, coming towards them. Uh, I imagine that's something that would really be worked out between the, the town, the select board, and the, and the uh, applicant moving forward if it becomes a problem. Yeah. But, um, I don't think the road is wide enough for a truck and a vehicle on that corner. Right, right at the top of the hill, it might not have one person, Let's have one person talking at a time. So, um, oh, well, well, Brandy basically said my point, which is, is that um, you know, there, there might not be really room for a, two trucks to pass each other at that top, uh, at the top of the hill. Um, and visibility, you, you wouldn't necessarily know that um, you're encountering a problem until you're there. So that's just a possible concern. Do you think a, a mirror, uh, not a, a fish eye? Sometimes, yes, thank you, in, in those kinds of contexts help you? Uh, it, I'll only point out that when we had a hurricane Irene go through, we lost the access to the lower. 
portion, and we ran truck traffic both mm -hmm. ways through that down to Cabot and then back okay. to Barry. So we have tested it. I think was how long, Randy? About Quite four a months. Yeah. Four or five months. Okay. Without any incidents. All right, and my understanding is that um, in regards to the. Uh, uh, what the town is reimbursed for that sort of like making improvements to the road that if, if it were a problem that's something that could be just negotiated and, and fixed after the mm -hmm. fact yeah i think so we'll mm -hmm. hear from the town in a minute so uh, in fact why don't we do this now in the town you have you, you express concerns on the transportation issues so what would you like to say um I, mine mine was more on um just uh you know the we have a plan to pave the road up to the new access thing. I just would like to, in the future, negotiate um, the terms of uh, the reimbursement to the town from Slopes and Cord. So, and you, I think you stated that that's not part of this hearing. So, so, so what was the concern about the road not being paved? I put it that way. In other words, if, it, if the road continues to be the way it is now and the truck traffic is on... There's not a concern from the town's point of view. This is more a courtesy to um, Swenson Quarry um, and our relationship with the quarry that we paved the road. There, obviously, during mud season, there are restrictions on when they can drive trucks up and down the, the hill. So the, the thought with paving is, is more a gesture towards the Swenson Quarry. Um, they have been contributing to our paving fund yearly through the reimbursement. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's a, the, as a dirt road, it's, it's fine. We, the town doesn't really have an issue um, yeah. with it staying the way it is. Okay. All right. Um, and and d does the town have any concerns about the top of Cabot Hill? The Cabot Road that we were just discussing in terms of, I don't know if it's a blind corner, I don't have it in mind. Yeah, I mean, Kylie brings up a good point and, you know, um, having some signage, some, some, something there to address that issue, would, it would be a good thing to do, uh, I think. It would um, just be truck centering and parking. Or, or, you know, because sometimes, you know, on a back road, I often drive kind of in the middle of the road and when I, sometimes I see somebody on a corner and they scoot over and it's kind of a... That's the way people <laughs> drive back roads. So some kind of warning, you know, something would be would be good. It is, it is a blind corner. There's a drop. And right on that corner, there is a class four road almost directly across from just before you get to the top where you go around the corner. Mm -hmm. There is a road there, and people live there in the summer, and I've seen cars coming in and out of that. So that that actual road was in use when the uh, for the same uh, flood. We, we actually, it was that old north, that's not old north, old quarry road, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And I just spend a lot of, I mean, I'm just speaking in terms of foot traffic because I walk up and down that road all the time and I think about that, um, you know, just being uh, very cautious when I'm on that corner because I can't see what's coming and, you know, you either walk on the right side or the wrong side depending mm -hmm. on what direction you're going in. So, I can understand his concern for, the traffic and if two co if two trucks are one's coming up and one's coming down I can see where that and would be I a think problem. That, that, you know, ninety five percent of the output of the Woodbury quarry is consumed by Swenson Granite. And we only use one truck mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose of we want experience, people who know what they're getting into when they go to Woodbury. They're all on radio communication with each other. And you know, I think that they're they're very concerned. They're they're very aware of the, the do's and don'ts on the Cabot Road, and, and uh, we have very few problems with the with the town on, on any of the issues with, that have to do with the road because Randy takes care of it immediately if there is one. Um, you know, I think we try to control that who is coming in and out of the court. We're not having a whole raft of random cowboys coming down, we have you know certain requirements that you must have on your truck to come in and get a block of granite from our quarry. And if you don't have that, you won't be loaded with granite. You won't be, you know, so. So can I say that if there is a concern as um, an individual living on that road or a witness thereof of something, that Randy would be the person that we would contact for complaint? Randy would be happy to, to <laughs> relay Address. any of your concern. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing everyone has to realize is that it is a public road that's rated for that type of traffic, and we are not police. 
So we, we really, other than we can say, you're not coming to our quarry anymore, but you know, on any particular incident, we, we, we don't have jurisdiction once they hit that road. They're on their own, and they have to live by the rules. So. Okay, um, Mr. Eastman, traffic? Yeah, I'm, I'm co confused. I mean, I'm, I'm right in between the, the top road that they're still going to be using, and, I, and Cabot Road is just below me, almost the same distance. So there'll be there'll be trucks going back and forth both sides until they get in. Uh, how long before the new road's built? Is it, it, tell us again exactly. You, I, you, have you come up Cabot Road from Woodbury. I'm, I'm the second, the first left after Swenson Quarry Road. First left after Swenson. On the same on, on the, the same side. side as our two entrances. Okay. okay. All right. So you're between the two. You'd be between, yeah, between the two. the upper road and the and the Cabot. Road. Okay. All right. So now what was your I mean, how long before the new road is, is built? Um, I, I would, some of that will be dependent with, uh, you know, what, what goes on here. Well, we're looking to move on it quick, right? We would look to do it this summer, yes. Yeah, and because on, you know, 12 of 23, uh, section F in the square, you know, it says average, average of seven loads per day at, at the present rate. And then it says it's going to go up to 11 loads per day within 10 to 15 years. I mean, that's, that's you know, uh, what if you have a good week? You get a lot of granted. I don't know. Is that just going to yeah, increase? That, 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 and, and we had to address that at, at our last hearing. We, you know, we did have to, to yeah. just speak to traffic. Because it, it, like and the state, you know, the state testified whether they felt this road could accommodate that number of trucks. And, yeah, yeah, because yeah. If, if I remember correctly, your quarry, what, approximately nine months out of the year? And you stockpile and you truck all year. We truck all year. Okay. Yeah. Except except in Muncie. Uh, <laughs> and we're and in regards to traffic, we're actually considering blacktop and road up to the second landing. Yeah. Sounds like it, yes. Mm -hmm. So how is that gonna affect us as taxpayers? <laughs> it's um, that's that's a, that's okay. definitely I'm outside sorry. of this. But, but I did have a follow-up question. What's the point then? I did have a follow-up question for Mr. Eastman. So is your concern that because there's a there's going to be an additional access road even though the extraction rate is not changing and they're not changing that permit, you are saying because there will be an additional access road, there will be more traffic in front of your house? The, 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 it's noise from the trucks when I'm there will be on the Cadet Road and on the Upper Road. There and still can you hear oh, yeah, the absolutely. noise from you, where the Upper Road You can road see the be. roof of my camp from the Upper Road and you can see it from Cadet Road. It's and got... It, Close. And, and that's your full-time residence? No, no, we're there. I'm, I mean, I have five weeks vacation. You know, oh. I have five weeks vacation. I'm there whenever I can be. Okay. And I go there for, to get away from the city that I live in. And try traffic. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else you want to add, Mr. Ethan? No. Hold on. Um... Let's see. We, we, um, Smith. Again, again. Randy. Randy. In traffic, do you have any issues or talk, discussion, or points you want to add that hasn't been already raised with respect to traffic? I believe a lot of them have been met. Um, definitely concerns. Um, and I still don't understand the noise part because between my house being right on less than 100 feet from Cabot Road, my house being down at the bottom, to being up at land, when, you're, when we're up at land, I just don't understand if, if they're going to be expanding. If I'm up at my land, it's like happening like right behind me. It echoes from the back portion coming from Cabot. It's wide open. So by them opening and expanding it, it's going to be louder. So just to explain, they the sound condition applies to their property line. Mm -hmm. And it can't go over a certain decibel level at their property line. So if what they decide to do 
kicks them over that, they're in violation of their existing permit. If you find that the changes they've made so are too fair. loud, you should contact um, Josh or contact the company because it's the enforcement mechanism that needs to be used if that comes into play. it's not just during the day and during the week, it's even weekends. Not, not for us, it's not for us. Well, we have, we have we, a stipulation on We that. can't do anything about that now because if allegedly that was happening, that would be a violation of their existing permit and you should call them and call someone. Natural Resources Board. Natural okay. Resources Board. That's the avenue for that. Um, we can't, we're not changing that standard mm -hmm. now. That's the and, and we haven't so, trucked. We haven't trucked in. Not the that you're trucking, but you're, you're working up there. Yeah. On not the on weekends. We haven't worked in on the weekend in three years. You, everyone should know that if you if you there's an excellent website that this that the A and R has or that Act Two Fifty has and it has all of the permits and all of the material involving this permit in particular. But if you want to have the history and want the most recent permit to know what those are and what those conditions are, and you want to put that on your on your refrigerator and circle those things and to follow up, you can do that. You can download a copy of the, of the um, permit and you can then, you know, be um, however aggressive you want to be in terms of trying to make sure that that permit's at higher and, and, um, uh, Or you can get in touch with me directly. I'm happy, can, happy to help you get whatever information you need or direct you in, in the right direction. That, that's, you know, part of my job. Um, and, you know, to help you address Violate, potential violation concerns. Um, so we're, we're not saying that, you, that your concerns are not important. Just the mechanism for them to be addressed is is through the enforcement arm of, of the Natural Resources Board. Um, so if if you think that they are, or at any point in the future are violating their permit conditions, then you can bring that to our attention, and you know then we'll you know take the avenue for recourse at that point. Um, Robin, Durkee, do you have anything additional um, no. points you want to raise? No, they answered my question when they said the road was going to be 40 feet wide and trucks could go both directions. Mm -hmm. um, I think that exhausts the discussion about criteria five. Uh, next is criteria eight, aesthetics and noise. We talked about the fact that we don't really need to and shouldn't consider noise. Aesthetics, uh, no one had, had, had I had a couple of questions. Okay. Um, we already answered how many square feet of acres of trees you're going to remove. You already discussed that. Um, when, you, when you remove the trees, are you cutting them at the trunk level? You're not, you're not pulling the roots up. Right, so it's you do you stump them, or how do you, oh, well, I guess you have to, well, you have to take the whole thing out because it's a quarry. Right. I'm used to regular construction projects where they yeah, don't no. take out the... Um, no, they would, they would scrape it clean. So the tree clearing, um, the most extensive tree clearing um, in the, the corner that I'm pointing to, which you probably can't see, is at elevation. Have you done any analysis about whether members of the public will be able to see when this is all said and done, meaning you've cleared to the green line, will it look like a... Yeah, I mean, what it, will it, it look like it from will, Cabot it, Road and... It, it will look like that right there. You'll have a large white spot in the sea of green. It'll just be a little bit bigger. And the visual impact <coughs> on Google Maps or from the Cabot Road will be probably imperceptible to the, to the normal person. It'll look like a large granite hole. So right now, from Route 15, can you see the existing quarry from Route 15? Route 14. 14. I mean, Route 14, sorry. No. No? No. no. And it's your testimony that when you clear you this additional 20 acres of 14. trees, you won't see? No. Not from Route 14. It'll still look like a forest block, basically. And what about from Cabot Road? The Cabot Road, uh, you don't really see the right-hand side, the larger forest the part you in the Cabot Road you're, you're looking at this wall here mm -hmm. yeah. so from Cabot Road it won't be a material change in they have a very good view of the left hand side there and, right and we saw that today when we were yeah. driving and from that, Ms. 
from um, that wall will move back, you know, 150 feet, but it will be the same. You don't see the bottom of the quarry, so all you see is the mm -hmm. wall. So you, re you really don't won't be able to perceive whether it's 50 feet this way or 50 feet that way. And you're not doing it all in one night. This is over no. a decade. No. Okay. Randy wishes it were Those are the only questions I had. It's not that easy. So it'll never be a, a completely exposed ridge, ridge line. It'll always, you know, it'll just be deeper, but there'll never be a, a clear cut top of the notch. I think that's maybe, is that what you're... Yeah, that's what I was just yeah. wanted to have that on the record. The, um, you, we pointed out today during the site visit, um, um, you pointed out the grout pile that was there, and initially, I guess, in part to, to deflect noise from heading uh, to the east, I guess it would be, I think if I got the directions correctly. In the original permit, um, they wanted us to create a, a berm mm -hmm. grout pile, meaning mm -hmm. they wanted us, as we quarried, to create a, a 15 foot high, I think it was, I think it was. Uh, berm, kind of where our current flat grout pile is there, mm -hmm. so instead of being flat, it would, be, would have been up because the torches were operating behind that area. Mm -hmm. And they felt that that would keep the the noise of the torches from going down the Cabot Road. We switched technology, so we never had to really build that wall. Mm -hmm. We went a different direction. So, so going forward, in terms of using uh, or um, disposing of the grout, uh, how would you be making any piles anymore, or is it is it going to be used to? It's sort of the same as they've mandated now that that area that you that we were all in that's right. that's the the dump area that it's been approved okay and so we continue to be in that area and be in flat and sort of um, to support traffic if there's any truck right. traffic that yeah. comes in and out and so forth I see uh, is there is there how much room do you have I guess so if if do you have uh, footprint enough when you're fully developed to dispose of the grout pile within that you know what I'm saying, without encroaching on either wetlands or, or, yeah, we're, or we're creating a, a, the one, a pile that is basically above tree line. We're, yeah, no, we're not going to we're not going to build up. The wetlands is is right in here. Right. Yep. This is really where where the the main quarry, and it drops off right there. You know, so it'll just be a continuation of that. So it'll be down, down slope of where the access will be. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other, um, any other issues on that? No. Criteria? Okay. Um, wildlife criteria 8A. I'll just make a comment um, regarding the grow pile. I know it was raises concern, uh, and I wasn't able to pull it or, or uh, put my finger on it on the spot, but there is a, a, an existing permit condition that states that there is some sort of reclamation plan in place and that when the time comes that this quarry ceases operation, whatever that may be, at any point down the road, they're going to be required to you know, fulfill their rec reclamation requirements, which include um, covering all grub um, tailings piles with topsoil. With what? Topsoil and try try to reestablish. Somebody's gonna hit the, the jackpot and get the topsoil back. <laughs> <project. laughs> no. And I think I think you know we, we, we should point out that, that the that the local communities have varied what they want to have happen with old with old quarries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Barry Town, we've turned you know we donated some of old quarries to to uh, uh, the rec to start the town forest. They put trail networks through where the the bike pass, you know, the mountain bike pass actually go through the the the, uh, the quarries. Mm -hmm. uh, the grout piles are used as a part of it. Uh, the ambiance of an old quarry, as it starts to be recaptured with the grout piles, is is a desired. Uh, so, 70 years from now, when our permit expires and we all sit down. You know, I think it would be a discussion that, you know, rather than say we're going to cover all the grout piles, yeah. we, you know, we started to take grout yeah. piles out in, in Barry and, and the neighbors were very upset. They didn't want, you know, it was their natural air conditioning. They didn't want this, to, you know, so I think it would be fair to say that, that uh, we had a rendering of, of, of the reclamation that we, that Don came up with and, and basically it showed, you know, the, the blocks along the, on the upper edge to, to prevent 
uh, falls, but it, it, it kind of had a, a, a path through the grout piles with trees and, and you know, it was, mm -hmm. so I don't think the, the answer is going to be to, to buy out some topsoil farm and try to, and try to yes. create a, a rolling hill, but, but, you know, the quarry itself has to be made safe, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and if we decommission a quarry, Imshaw requires that too, I believe. Well, it sounds like yeah. this is, and I'm not that familiar with it, but if that's the condition, now or permit in the permit when when, it, when your successor or your successor's successor <laughs> yeah. comes to do it they'll probably seek another permit right. yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think that, that that right would, now. Yeah. 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 okay um, criteria 8a is wildlife um, and that was will not have an undue adverse effect on the scenic and natural effect um, so this is where the bats come up. By any party opposing the applicant, the development yeah. said oh, destroy oh. significantly. Yeah. So yes, yes, there was a memo from ANR about protection of the bats and how quickly trees will come down. And I guess they have su probably suggested some permit language, wasn't it? They have. They mm -hmm. have. Is that acceptable that? to you? Uh, and we, we talked to Noel. Uh, we have no problem with their the, the permit language in general. Uh, we do have a problem this particular season since our our permitted. Um, uh, time frame would will probably have come and gone by the time we we actually have a permit. And we would not like to miss a whole season. Uh, so, in talking with Noel about where we were talking about uh, on the left hand side, that corner up there, Noel uh, felt that that would be no problem, and the road would be no problem, and that he would be happy to come and and walk the property and just uh, you know really work. I don't, he, think, I don't he, think they realized it was phased. And, and he uh, he told me he said in their in their um, uh, requested language he said uh, you know September first to April first or with prior written approval from Vermont Fish and Wildlife and, and that probably covers you know we, they, he seemed very reasonable so I yeah. think we'll be able to. those of you who don't know there's a uh, there's a concern about habitat of certain type of bats and so therefore there's an effort to try to restrict to cut down. Uh, taking down trees over four inches in size, which might provide habitat, and you don't know that there's there's a bat or a family of bats inside this tree. Pups. You can't knock and ask them. So, so there's a, there's, there's a concern about trying to protect that habitat as much as possible. That's what well, there's there's well, well, there's there's right. Right. yeah, it's not it's not habitat. It's the bats themselves. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so usually, permit conditions that give someone else. The approval backstop with no standards can be problematic. The Vermont Supreme Court just declared legislation illegal because of that. So I just want you to know, accepting this condition as written, we, the, if the Vermont Department of Fish and Wildlife was ever being unreasonable, there's no standard there. So if you're comfortable with, I think with we're no, comfortable. I just wanted if, to if point we got that in out. a legal battle about it, no, it no. would be it would be December before we know it. Right. Before exactly. we got to court, and it would be okay. Right. So, so just wanted to make I, sure you're comfortable. We, we did with call. That. We wanted okay. to get his thoughts and and say, listen, no, are you going to say we can't cut any trees? He said, no, 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 no. Right. I don't want you clear cutting. Okay. And, and so, so you're good we're with this condition. With that. Right. Okay. I didn't mean the Vermont Supreme Court. I meant the Vermont Supreme Court. Um, so, I don't know who raised the issue on extraction of uh, um, resources. Yep, so I... It seems like these pretty were, much what you're doing if you're running a granite quarry. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, so the, this was just um, included because of comments submitted by A&R. Um, and I can just, just run through them sure. real quickly. Marjorie Gale, state geologist, reviewed the application materials under criteria 9E, earth extraction, the agency reviews earth extraction operations for conformance with the... VGS practice for review of rock extraction. Um, page three describes the requested type of information in site plans. Some of the site plans may already exist for the purposes of stormwater permitting. Um, basically, it's just raised to make sure that they have all the necessary documentation um, from you know, that under that criteria. Um, I don't think any major concerns were raised, but okay. I added it to the, the list. Yeah. Um, Anything you want to add, uh, either applicant or? or well, Bob's going to talk to Marjorie and we'll figure out what sorts of site plans she'll need for the review. The, the PGS is more interested in sort of phasing and general quarry operations, and there is MSHA, but, you know, MSHA is sort of outside of our purview and what they ask for. So um, 
What is that? that I guess the question here is, and our comments don't suggest a condition. So they, they, it's just, hey, FYI, we need more information. It's That's how I read it. Right, so, that's accurate. So are you asking the commission to not issue the permit until you've gotten the information you need from nine under 9F? Because right now you don't have that information. Right, and I need... and. Because this is an existing court, so the practice is this document that outlines sort of what site plans, operational, you know, it, it gets into the details of the actual quarrying operation, and because that wasn't included in the application, um, the Geological Society is asking for that just to make sure that um, it's in accordance with the how the the details within the practice. Um, so right now, my in talking with Bob, he was going to follow up with Marjorie. Because this is an existing quarry, there's a number of items that may not, she may not need to review the project. So, um, so from our perspective, the commission's perspective, do we, is ANR asking the commission to do anything? Or is that just a conversation that happens between ANR and the applicant and nothing needs to be in, in a decision? Or a permit condition, or are you asking for a permit condition that says the applicant can't construct until ANR sends us a comment letter that it's reviewed? The no, I would, I would want I would want the conversation between geo geology and the applicant to occur, and that way we can figure out if they because at this point we don't know if she needs addition, if additional information is required. So. I mean, we, Should we put a time frame on within X number of days? Please let us know if you're. I mean, of all, you know, I thought the north, northern long-eared bats was going to push me over the edge, but, but that was fairly simple. We get to this, and, I, and we do simple? have a problem with, with this particular oh, okay. approach. If we were a, a, a new quarry and coming to someone saying we want to start a new quarry and we're going to go in here and do this and that, and we're going to make this road, and we're going to cut this off. I can understand most of this. We're an operating quarry. We've been operating for over 100 years. We're not changing our operation. We are not cutting off anybody. We're not, when it comes to earth extraction, you know, you read in here and it says, you know, they have to be sure that we're not make, preventing them from extracting the, the, the minerals that are on that location at a future date. Well. We are the minerals. That is what's there. We are extracting it. This is this is the whole point. Uh, I mean, I have no problem talking to to uh, Marge and, and and saying, but you know, when they start talking about the uh, the fissures and the cracks and the cleavage and the fracture, did these people wrote the book a hundred years ago? We have a Bible from from the division uh, very similar to hers that every quarry in New England has been mapped and laid out and, and we go to that for our own knowledge. I mean, you know, we're not going to rewrite that and say, okay, we, we're going to send a geologist in and he's going to tell us we have a fissure here and we have a crack there. It, you know, we have to deal with what's there. It is, we're, we're an operating quarry. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, they have 99% of this information either in our permits mm -hmm. when it comes to trucks and this and that. Uh, as far as what we're going to do with the, the property, it's it's right in front of you. We're going to go this way 100 feet. Mm -hmm. It's going to look the same. It's going to be the same as what you're looking at here, except it's going to be here. So the bed structure, the way we go at things, nothing's changing. And, and to, to have us, you know, they say, well, it's best done by, a, you know, a, a practicing uh, uh, geologist, you know. So, Jen, what I was hearing from you is that potentially ANR won't be requesting the same information that they would of a new quarry, but that conversation hasn't yet happened that yet? hasn't happened yet. And for um, other quarries, we've had site plans that, you know, show the phases and the stockpiles and sounds like a lot of that information is available, but we just haven't reviewed it. Um, and so it's... I mean, the way, the, way I look at, the way I look at this is that we, there is an existing permit for governing how this quarry should operate. So if there's, in this particular criteria, the, the ANR, if you want to raise an issue, you could say, look at how is the operation that proposed here mm -hmm. different to, and raise the issues that's 
that's a, that's addressed by criteria, <coughs> which is a permit will be granted for the extraction of processing of mineral and earth resources, and then it lists a couple of criteria. Some some of which is, is a reclamation plan. Well, there is a reclamation plan in the existing permit. So uh, unless there's something about the change that the application is now submitting that relates back to that, then it's been addressed. So I guess keep that in mind in terms okay. of your focusing on that. Um, and, and we we have tried to address all their comments. It's not that we're trying to be unreasonable. Uh, yeah. It's just in this particular case, A and R has been in every hearing that we've had, in every in every application that we've applied for, A and R has been a part of that. So they they've they've been part of all this information. And now to ask us to go and recreate and make a Bible for them, it, 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 it's difficult for us. It's not that we can't do it. It's just it does it does seem like there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And um, That's something to address in the post. Uh, yeah. Panel. Yeah. Well, plus, the other thing is, most of this was written for gravel extraction. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not applicable to our mm -hmm. court. Mm -hmm. okay. um, final criteria nine K public investments. Um, well, I have to demonstrate that the demonstrate that the project will not endanger any public investment. Um, and I think you you know. Most yeah. concern yeah. we had was in terms of the road part. Yeah, and the town has no objection. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. And, I, and I included that just to, in, in case the town um, did have concern. But he already stated that as a gravel road, there are no concerns, um, and it seems like paved is ideal for both sides. And, so. and, and although Michael wanted to get some negotiating leverage by having a stipulation, <laughs> he, knows, he knows that we do uh, sit down with the town and go through uh, what we pay and, and has been very open to, hey, if we're not carrying our weight, we want to know it. And, and it, you've become very much more focused on, on accounting for, for what you're doing with our dollars. So I, I don't think that's really a problem. Um, you, you raised Yeah, them. well, Criterion 10. So... And this may be something that we just follow up with, but your application says the town doesn't have a town plan, but I think Woodbury does have a town plan, right? We have a very... Or, or what is it? We On your a, website, you have something called 2003 town plan. Yes, we do have a town plan from okay. 2003, which should have been redone um, in 2008, and so we're at this point 11 years in arrear. With a, so with is, a, it, is it expired? It's expired. Yes. All right, we should just have that on the record that the town plan... Expired. Even though it's on your website as your town plan, it's expired. And so it has no website. legal significance. <laughs> I don't know where that came from on the website. Mm. All right, well, that was easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, getting to my script, I think we're getting to the end of the script here. Um, okay. So we will now recess. We're not going to close this hearing. We're going to recess the hearing. Um, we probably will meet as a commission, and if there's some additional information that we need, we'll communicate to the application applicant and say there's some additional information we might need. Um, and then we will um, in due course and as rapidly as we can, we will uh, uh, make a decision. I was going to add one thing. Joss, when I think it has before, the approximate grade from the road up to the base of the pile is at 3.5%. Perfect. So it's a 26 feet of rise over 759 feet. So, so one thing we talked about is, you know, a little bit more detail on, along those lines would we be helpful. I'll, I'll forward that um, just because the, the picture is, you know, there's no real scale to it, you know. So I think if we could in some way uh, quantify... I think to, to satisfy the stormwater requirements, we're going to have to lay that road out and, and combine that work into the stormwater plan. So that's going to happen. And, and I'm saying for so the quarry as well, not just the road. Right, because you, you, you've, you've shown it on the picture, but, you know, as far as... Have you done a survey in the quarry with limitations? No. You know, I mean, we ought to be able to quantify that in, in some way. Just, I mean, you could theoretically double it, right? Yeah, okay, so if you have some measurements or, or some, I think that would be helpful. I didn't see that part of the this, this is one we just developed since we applied. Okay, so, so I think adding some more specificity uh, with those details would be helpful. I'll take care of that for the long term. It, it'll be in a in a in a memo. It's not like it's
take the notes down here, but we're trying. I think we got a lot of good information on the record, so we can limit the extent of the of that follow up yep. memo. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Just and, well, Thank I you. just reiterate um, from this point forward any inquiries, requests, assistance needed with anything, um, all must flow through me. There's no direct, not that it'll be a problem, but there's no direct correspondence permitted with the commissioners. Um, so just anything. My name is Josh Donabedian. My name is on the, just about everything that has been issued regarding this project. So track me down if you need me. Not Josh, not this Josh. <laughs>